Today we take a look at a Peter Sellers movie released in 1962, with a bit of fun trivia thrown in for good measure. Filming began on the movie Only Two Can Play in April 1961, and was shot almost entirely on location in Swansea, South Wales. Adapted from the 1955 Kingsley Amos book That Uncertain Feeling, with a screenplay written by Brian Forbes, the husband of actress Nanette Newman, and the father of children's TV presenter Emma Forbes. It was produced by Frank Launder and Sidney Gilliatt, and was nominated for Best Film at the annual BAFTA Awards. It stars Peter Sellers, Virginia Maskell and Mai Zetterling, and tells the story of John Lewis played by Peter Sellers, a poorly paid and professionally frustrated married librarian and occasional drama critic, whose head is turned by the amorous advances of the glamorous Liz, played by Zetterling, to the annoyance of his long-suffering wife Jean. Virginia Maskell delivers a wonderfully understated performance in this role. Sellers was nominated for a Best British Actor Award for the film, while Maskell was nominated for Best British Actress at the same awards. Ironically, not for Only Two Can Play, but for The Wild and the Willing. She tragically took her own life in 1968 at the age of just 31. She won the USA National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actress posthumously for her performance in her final film, Interlude, in 1968. She had been married to Sir Geoffrey Adam Shakerley, who was the photographer at the royal wedding of Prince Edward and Sophie Rhys Jones in 1999. The film is set in the fictional Welsh town of Aberdarcy. Kingsley Amos had been a lecturer at Swansea University for many years, so it is fair to presume that this was why Swansea was the chosen location. In fact, he only left Swansea in September of 1961 to take up a new post at Cambridge. He makes a cameo appearance in the film, Alfred Hitchcock style, casually stepping off a bus. The musical score was composed by Richard Rodney Bennett, an eclectic composer of music for stage and screen. Murder on the Orient Express and Four Weddings in a Funeral are some of his notable works. Due to the depiction of implied infidelity in the film, Swansea Library, it seems, would not allow permission for filming inside the library. Instead, the interior library shots were filmed at Glynvivian Art Gallery, directly over the road. Interestingly, times must have changed, as when the TV adaptation was filmed in 1985 with Dennis Lawson and Sheila Gish, Swansea Library welcomed the BBC cameras with open arms. Now, Swansea was still rebuilding after the awful devastation of the three-night splits by the Luftwaffe in 1941. An unconscious nod to this is the use of fire engine scene in the film, dashing to extinguish the fire at the theatre. It had been used on the streets of Swansea during the Blitz. It was named the Big Six and was recently fully restored and is housed safely back home in the city. Swansea Market, which had been destroyed during the air raids, was finally rebuilt with its unmistakable domed glass roof. It reopened just after filming began. It is preserved on film in this scene, with a view of the then town centre over Kenneth Griffith's shoulder. Two other local iconic buildings appear in this scene, Swansea Grand Theatre and the 3000 seat Plaza Cinema. Fast forward to 2016 and another building appears in place of the Plaza, opening in 1967 as the Odeon Cinema and the infamous Top Rank Nightclub. Although by 2016 it was called Oceana. In 2021 we see the site sadly now demolished and awaiting a new fate. Also a cheeky first appearance of the new 3,500 seat Swansea Arena. In one of the opening scenes Mai Zetelin's character blocks traffic outside the library. In the front of the queue is a 1960 Vauxhall Victor F series with the registration number VKG973. Later in the film, she gives Peter Sellers a lift home, and while navigating a bend, forces a car off the road. And you've guessed it, it's the same car. The car also crosses in front of Sellers when he crosses the road in this early scene. Perhaps there was a limited budget for cars on set in those days. There is an interesting scene where Peter Sellers is on a bus, and over his shoulder through the window 
we see Swansea Bay, with the unmistakable Guildhall Tower clearly visible. This is exactly how the view would have been with the bus driving up Town Hill Road. It is likely that this scene was filmed using back projection in a studio environment. The attention to detail is very good, as the actual view through the window would have been accurate. The theatre used in the filming was the Public Hall in Britain Ferry, which had recently closed. Sadly, the site is now a Tesco store. Richard Attenborough was asked to guest star in the film to give it a bit more oomph at the box office. It certainly worked, as Only Two Can Play was the third highest grossing film of the year in Britain. Marjorie Lawrence, the girl on the bus, was married in real life to the chauffeur in the film, Howard Green. She has the honour of uttering some of the first words spoken on ITV when it launched in 1955, in the short-lived soap opera Round the Redways. Margie and Howard's daughter is the TV presenter Sarah Green. Gillian Vaughan, the girl living downstairs who can be seen undressing at the beginning of the film, was at the time married to the entertainer Des O'Connor, who was no stranger to Swansea himself when he played Buttons in the pantomime Cinderella at Swansea Grand Theatre in 1959. Maudie Edwards, who plays the landlady Mrs Davis, was born in Neath. And for all Coronation Street fans, she also spoke the first words in the live first episode of The Soap in 1960. As a singer, she supported Frank Sinatra at the London Palladium in 1950, and provided the singing voices for Diana Dawes in Diamond City in 1949, and Margaret Lockwood in I'll Be Your Sweetheart in 1945. Frederick Piper, along with his only two can play wife Maudie Edwards, had also appeared together in the 1945 film Pink String and Sealing Wax, and in Burke and Hare in 1972, which was the last screen appearances for them both. There are a number of well-known actors that appear in minor roles throughout the film, I shall rattle my way through some of them now. Talfrin Thomas, Welsh comedy actor best known for his role as Private Cheeseman in Dad's Army, appears briefly and uncredited as a stagehand, who inadvertently sets fire to the set. Meg Wynne Owen, who plays the library assistant at the beginning of the film, would later go on to star in Upstairs Downstairs as Hazel Bellamy. Desmond Thwellin, who played Q in the James Bond films, makes a brief appearance as a clergyman near the end of the film. Marie Devereaux, the dark-haired girl on the tennis court, later became a body double for Elizabeth Taylor in some scenes of the Hollywood epic Cleopatra in 1963. Graham Stark appeared many times with Peter Sellers, including all of the Sellers' Pink Panther movies. Margaret Lacey, the pianist at the theatre, is best remembered internationally for appearing in the 1971 James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever. The AEC Region 5 MCW Orion double-decker bus used in the film was released as a die-cast model produced by EFE in 1995. It was an active service bus in the area at the time of filming, with the number plate NCY467. John LeMessurier, best known as Sergeant Wilson in TV's Dad's Army, appears as a council committee man who catches Sellers' character at a party where Sellers pretends to be a plumber. The two scenes where he interacts with him are very funny. George Woodridge, who plays the farmer and fires a warning shot at Sellers and Zetterling in the film, had his biggest success in 1972 when he appeared as the puppet maker Inigo Pipkin in the children's TV series The Pipkins. The famous character Hartley Hare was from the series. He sadly died during the filming of series two. One of the council committee members near the end of the film is Charles Lloyd Pack, the father of Roger Lloyd Pack, Trigger from Only Fools and Horses fame. Einan Evans, Welsh film writer and actor, appears as a town hall clerk. He had also appeared with Sellers in I'm All Right Jack and Two Way Stretch. Meredith Edwards was a popular Welsh character actor, whose son Johan became an actor along with his grandchildren, Evan and Rhys Meredith. Richard Attenborough and Gerald Sim, the cigarette thief at the party, were brothers-in-law in real life. Attenborough was married to Sim's sister, Sheila. Richard Attenborough's brother is veteran broadcaster and natural historian, Sir David Attenborough. One of the first outdoor scenes involving the double-decker bus shows it passing the old Regal Cinema in Clenetley, which was later used in 1966 by Dorothy Squires to record her homecoming concert, which was released as an LP in 1969. 
The next scene sees the bus arriving on Swansea's Kingsway. It is very likely that these were filmed on different days, as the locations are 10 miles apart and no other scenes were filmed in Flatley. The sequence in which the Peter Sellers character reviews a local drama production without seeing it, unaware that a fire at the theatre has caused the performance to be abandoned, is inspired by a real life incident in the journalistic career of Dylan Thomas. The scene where he hands in the newspaper review of the theatre performance was partly filmed in Christina Street. Yes, I did say Christina. The locals in Swansea, and I would class myself as one of those, call it this. The street was named after Christina Henrietta Victoria Jones, the daughter of photography pioneer and artist Reverend Calvert Richard Jones, who owned a large amount of land in the area in the 19th century. The building survived right up until 2018, when it was purchased, demolished and rebuilt as a student accommodation block. Interestingly, the Sefton and Bar for Turf Accountant seen here is redressed later in the film to double up as the Abadasi Chronicle, with a strategic board covering up the new Ian Eyre sign writing on the wall. Kenneth Griffiths had seen cleaning the step to the front gate of his house, after looking up to his curtain-twitching wife Megan at the window. It was always said in Wales, you could judge a woman by the doorstep she kept. Megan is played by Sheila Manahan, who is the wife of Fulton Mackay from TV's Porridge. Kenneth Griffiths also appeared in another Sellers film, I'm Alright Jack. Only Two Can Play premiered at the Albert Hall Cinema in Swansea on January the 10th, 1962, the day before its London opening. The final scenes where John Lewis and his wife Jean are operating a mobile library were shot opposite the locally famous Shepherd's Shop in Gower. My Zetterling had a relationship with Hollywood acting great Tyrone Power in the 1950s. His father, Frederick Tyrone Edmund Power, was a theatre actor and had appeared in the touring play The True Son of Erin at Swansea Grand Theatre in 1901. The girls playing tennis were filmed at Delabesh Park in the sketty area of Swansea. It still has four tennis courts, although now a bit more upmarket with an all-weather surface. Over the road behind them, we see Bishop Gore School, which was used to film Hunky Dory in 2011 with Mini Driver. Margie Lawrence is filmed walking towards the Kingsway in the town centre. As you can see, in 2021, the street has changed significantly. The house used as the lodgings for Lewis and his family is situated on Stanley Terrace, and this is the promenade where the scenes overlooking the town were filmed. Where Sellers and Kenneth Griffith's characters get off the bus is situated here on the Kingsway. Over the shoulder of Sellers, we see the YMCA, which retains almost the same look today. He continues following the girl as she passes outside the General Electric shop, which is now a Tugualia social housing office. The famous Evan Reese Butter Factory was next door. He crosses the road, and we see the Glyn Vivian Art Gallery doubling as the fictional Abadasi Library. There is a subtle humorous scene where Sellers interacts with the landlord. Well, just watch, no words needed. Nice early product placement for Airwick for Air Freshener, I think. And going with that idea, there is a nice cameo appearance by the little blue bags of salt from Smith's Crisps Salt and Shake in the pub near the end of the film. Swansea had a Smith's Crisps factory at the time, and I don't think it harmed the sales of sugar puffs either. The quote, it is not observed that librarians are wiser men than others, by Ralph Waldo Emerson, appears as an overlay in the opening moments. And the fuller quote is, people are not better for the sun and the moon, the horizon and the trees. It is not observed that the keepers of Roman galleries or the ballets of painters have any elevation of thought or that librarians are wiser men than others. There is a minor blooper in the opening scenes when Sellers drops a book onto the library floor. Briefly we see the title. In an unbroken camera angle he moves to the end of the bookshelf, looks down at the book and it cuts to a close-up. It is a different book title. In the defence of the filmmakers they wouldn't have known that a crazy Welshman would be able to forensically go through every frame 
almost 60 years later. I first saw the film in the mid-70s on a black and white 12-inch portable TV in the bedroom of my Swansea home. It was a late night feature film and I must have been around 13 or 14. Through the small, snowy, grainy screen, I recognise some bits of my home city and have been fascinated with it ever since. Although I must confess that a rear view of a naked Mai Zetling I'm sure helped spark the interest too. And yes, I know it would have been a body double, but hey, a bum's a bum. Filming generated lots of public interest at the time and we see the shadows of bystanders in this shot watching the action, along with a stray dog. And this is the reverse view of Kenneth Griffiths frantically catching the bus. One of the camera operators was Peter Allwork, who became a prolific cameraman and pioneered aerial cinematography, working on films including Superman, The Eagle Has Landed, Georgie Girl, the Wicker Man, Never Say Never Again, A View to a Kill, Good Morning Vietnam, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, 101 Dalmatians, and Out of Africa. He founded Aerial Camera Systems in 1979, which still exists today and is thriving. All work collaborated with some of the world's greatest directors, including Alfred Hitchcock, Orson Welles, Steven Spielberg, Ridley Scott, and Richard Attenborough, and was also a BAFTA award winner. His work on Only Two Can Play can be seen on the opening moments, panning the town centre. He died in 2004. Peter Sellers' fellow goon, Harry Seacombe, was born in Swansea, and his family home in St Thomas is almost visible in the opening pan over the town. I'm sure that some of Seacombe's family must have met up with Peter during filming. Only Two Can Play has a respectable 6.7 rating on IMDb and a 63% audience approval on Rotten Tomatoes. It is well worth a look and has some funny moments and it preserves forever on film a 1960s Welsh town. So I'll leave you now with a selection of stills from the movie alongside the appropriate now equivalents. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more.